If you're tracking innovation inside, well, pretty much any company right now, you know, AI adoption isn't just talk anymore. It's really here. Oh, absolutely. We're seeing deep learning, machine learning, automating tasks, generative AI popping up in customer support. Right. It's everywhere. Yeah. And the speed, the scale of it all, it's fundamentally changing the risk landscape. Yeah, it's that dynamic nature that's the real kicker. Right. You know, traditional controls, those old checklists, they assumed things were stable, predictable. Right. But AI is probabilistic, it learns, it changes. So those old methods, almost instantly obsolete. And these systems are embedded deep now, underwriting, supply chains, customer service, even OT environment. OT operational technology, like yeah. in factories, controlling physical stuff. Exactly. Critical infrastructure. Right. Which makes internal audits role absolutely central to this whole conversation. Okay, let's unpack this then. Our mission today is really to give you a shortcut to understanding how internal audit, or IA, is evolving. Because they're the ones responsible for governance, for controls. And it's not just about checking boxes after the fact anymore. Well, it can't be. IA has to become uh, more of a strategic partner, making sure AI is used responsibly, securely, and crucially, complies with all these new regulations popping up globally. And that strategic shift is vital because AI brings whole new types of risk, stuff that old audit plans just weren't designed to even look for. So let's dive into those new risk dimensions. From that internal audit perspective, why exactly does the old playbook fail here? What's the core problem? Well, the fundamental thing is the shift away from, you know, clear if then logic that you can easily trace okay. to these more opaque probabilistic models. The why behind a decision can get lost. Huh. So the big risks IA has to track now. First, bias and fairness. Right. You have to ensure AI decisions, say, in loan applications or even hiring, are equitable that they aren't just repeating or amplifying biases hidden in the training data. Mm -hmm. That makes sense conceptually, but how does an auditor, who probably isn't a data scientist, actually test for subtle bias? That sounds technically really challenging. It absolutely is, and that ties into the second major risk, explainability, or the lack of it, the black box problem. Ah, uh, yes. If a model uses, you know, thousands of variables with complex weightings to reach a decision, how does the audit team understand the logic? Right. That lack of transparency makes assurance incredibly hard, especially when regulators ask why a certain decision was made. You need to be able to answer that. And it's not like AI is a static software you install once, right? Once it's out there, interacting with the real world. Exactly. The real world is messy, mm -hmm. which brings us to model drift. Okay. This is a tricky one. It's the risk that a model's performance slowly degrades after it's deployed because the live data it's seeing starts to differ, sometimes significantly, from the data it was trained on. Can you give an example? Sure, think about a model trained on, say, pre-pandemic supply chain patterns. If you just kept using that model today without retraining or recalibrating it, its predictions would likely drift way off course because the underlying reality has changed so much. And the risks aren't just accidental drift, they can be deliberate, malicious even. Tell us about adversarial attacks. Yes, adversarial attacks. These are a critical cybersecurity threat specific to AI. Okay. Bad actors trying to manipulate or trick the AI. This could be through data poisoning. Data poisoning? How does that work? Well, imagine during the training phase, someone subtly injects bad or misleading data. The goal is to intentionally compromise the model's behavior later on. Mm -hmm. Or you have evasion attacks once it's deployed, where they try to craft inputs that fool the model into making a mistake, like misclassifying something. Give us a concrete example of data poisoning. Okay, think about a bank using AI for fraud detection. Right. A sophisticated attacker could feed the training process lots of subtly altered transaction data that looks normal, but actually teaches the model to ignore a specific pattern of real fraud later on. Wow, so it actively learns not to see the fraud. Precisely. It's trained to fail in a specific way. So if the model can be poisoned and it might be drifting and we can't even explain its decisions, IA has a massive challenge, especially with regulations closing in. Exactly right. And add to that, we often see governance gaps. AI projects can spin up fast, you know? Yeah. But the roles, the responsibilities, the escalation paths, if something goes wrong with a model, they're often fuzzy or just missing. Mm. And then there's the huge weight of regulatory pressure. Mm -hmm. The EU AI Act, new UK standards, US frameworks evolving. IA has to build compliance with these new rules right into their audit plans immediately. Concepts like unacceptable risk need controls. So it's clear IA's job has shifted. It's proactive now. They need to embed controls early, assure the strategy alliance, and critically, 
upskill their own teams on all this algorithmic risk stuff. That's the core theme, yes. Mm -hmm. Moving from looking backwards at compliance checks to looking forwards, integrating controls right from the start. Which leads us nicely into the practical side. Section two, how are audit teams actually doing this? It sounds like a mountain to climb. It is challenging, but there are concrete steps. The absolute foundation, the non-negotiable first step, is establishing visibility. Meaning? IA teams need to push for and maintain a comprehensive, up-to-date inventory of all AI systems. Think of it like an AI census for the whole organization. So not just the big custom-built models. No, everything. Proprietary models, yes, but also smaller embedded tools, any crucial third-party AI services, vendor systems, you need the full picture. Why is that inventory so critical? What does it enable? Well, without it, you have blind spots, right? Yeah. It helps identify things like vendor concentration risk. Ah, like if multiple critical functions all rely on the same external AI provider. Exactly. That's a single point of failure. But crucially, the inventory lets IA prioritize. You can flag the high-impact systems, the ones facing customers, the ones touching sensitive regulations, the ones critical to operations, and focus your limited audit resources there first. Okay, so you have the map, the inventory. How do they then audit the governance around these systems? Are there standard frameworks they're using? Yes, teams are definitely leaning on established AI risk frameworks to structure their controls. We're seeing a lot of adoption of the NIST AI risk management framework. Okay, NIST. It's excellent for mapping accountability, defining roles, responsibilities, and also the international standard, ISO IEEE 42001. That's essentially becoming the global standard for managing AI systems responsibly. So those frameworks provide the blueprint, but how does IA actually insert itself into the AI development process? Are they still just auditing after the fact? The leading approach is shifting away from that. It's about embedding on it early, getting involved right in the design, the training data validation, the testing stages. Before the model even goes live. Uh, ideally, yes. Instead of finding a bias issue six months after launch, IA is reviewing training data quality and validation methods before deployment. It's about assurance by design, not just after the fact checking. Now, here's a really interesting twist. IA isn't just auditing AI. They're starting to use AI tools themselves to become better auditors. Oh, absolutely. This is a huge internal shift, potentially revolutionary for the function. How so? Well, think about traditional auditing. Mm -hmm. It often relied on sampling, right? You check, say, a small percentage of invoices or transactions. Right, because checking everything manually was just impossible. Exactly. But now, IA can leverage AI tools, things like advanced analytics, natural language processing, anomaly detection to analyze entire data sets, 100% oh. coverage. Wow. This dramatically boosts the level of assurance and it enables a move towards continuous monitoring. Continuous monitoring, that sounds key. It is, and this is maybe the biggest takeaway for listeners here. IA is shifting from those periodic point in time audits. Like the annual checkup. Right towards a state where embedded analytics and dashboards monitor key AI systems and controls almost in real time. This gives a much more current, proactive view of risk. That continuous monitoring seems like the perfect answer to things like model drift, doesn't it? And you mentioned audit plans need to be tailored now. They have to be. You can't audit everything with the same intensity. Plans now have to stratify AI use cases based on their risk profile. So high priority for? Definitely regulatory sensitive models, anything customer facing with potential for harm and systems critical to core processes. And the audit scope now has to cover the entire model life cycle. Meaning from cradle to grave. Pretty much. Oh. From the initial idea and data sourcing through model design, training, validation, deployment, ongoing monitoring, eventually even how the model is responsibly retired or disposed of. Okay, so we've mapped out the ideal path, the necessary evolution, but let's be real. There must be significant hurdles. Let's move into section three. What are the key pitfalls stopping organizations from getting this right? I'd say the biggest, most immediate one is the skill gap. With an internal audit. Yes. Many internal auditors come from traditional finance or IT general controls backgrounds. They often lack, you know, a deep enough understanding of data science, machine learning concepts, statistical methods for fairness. So they don't need to code in Python, but they need to grasp the fundamentals, like Validation sets, supervised versus unsupervised learning, bias metrics. Precisely. If they can't have an intelligent conversation with the data science teams, if they can't ask the right questions, that black box problem just becomes impossible to overcome. And another thing we hear is that AI projects often start in corners of the business, bypassing central oversight. That's governance fragmentation. Exactly. 
an AI initiative might bubble up in marketing or R&D or a specific business unit, yeah. and it gets developed and deployed without being properly integrated into the company-wide enterprise risk framework that IA oversees. This creates massive blind spots where significant risks can build up unnoticed. And there's a big question about proving these new methods even work, right? I think one of our sources mentioned a finding from UK regulators. Mm -hmm. Yes, that FRC finding is quite telling. The UK's Financial Reporting Council looked at the top six accounting firms. The big ones. Right, and found they are not systematically tracking how their own use of AI tools is actually impacting audit quality. Wow, why is that so concerning? Well, think about it. If IA starts relying heavily on AI for its own work, maybe for automated document review or continuous monitoring, but they haven't rigorously measured the accuracy or effectiveness of that AI, mm -hmm. then the quality of the audit itself could be degrading without anyone realizing it. They might be gaining speed, but are they losing reliability? It means the assurance function itself could be introducing new unmanaged AI risks. Okay, now let's pivot to the really cutting edge stuff. Where is this heading? What are the advanced frontiers where IA needs to collaborate? One major area is cyber AI convergence. IA needs to go beyond standard IT security audits. They need to work with cybersecurity teams to specifically test the AI models themselves against those adversarial attacks. We talked about data poisoning, evasion, model inversion. The AI model is now a critical asset that needs its own threat modeling and security testing. And taking that idea beyond the data center, you mentioned OT earlier. Yeah. Oh, industrial AI controls. Mm -hmm. This is huge in manufacturing, energy, critical infrastructure. AI models are increasingly used to monitor or control industrial control systems, ICS and SCADA networks. Right. So IA has to partner really closely with the OT security folks. They need to assess the risk of AI embedded in these physical systems. Imagine an AI predictive maintenance model failing, Okay. maybe due to drift or even a minor attack. If it triggers a false alert leading to an unnecessary shutdown, that could be incredibly costly, maybe even dangerous depending on the process. And finally, there's the whole ESG movement, environmental, social governance. How does AI governance fit in there? It fits squarely into the, S to the social pillar, yep. primarily. IA is really well placed here. How so? They can systematically evaluate AI models for fairness, for bias, for broader societal impacts. They can even look at the EA by assessing the energy footprint of training massive models, for example. This aligns AI governance directly with what stakeholders increasingly care about regarding ESG performance. And the ultimate evolution of the audit process itself, moving beyond the periodic check. That's the trend towards continuous assurance. Using those embedded analytics and real-time monitoring dashboards we mentioned earlier, right. .i can move away from episodic audits towards a continuous flow of assurance data. This lets them spot anomalies or control failures, potentially in hours or days, instead of months later during the annual audit cycle. Okay, so wrapping this all up, right. what's the core message here? It feels like internal audit is shifting from just being the compliance police That's right. to becoming much more of a strategic partner. Ensuring AI is not just compliant, but governed well, controlled effectively, and really aligned with business strategy and stakeholder trust. That sums it up perfectly. And achieving that requires embedding IA much earlier in the AI development lifecycle. And it absolutely demands strong collaboration across what's often called the three lines of defense. Which are? The first line is the business unit actually owning and using the AI. The second line is your risk management and compliance functions. And the third line is internal audit itself. All three need to be talking and working together on this. So for you listening, whether you're building AI, managing risk, or in audit yourself, maybe we can boil this down to a quick action checklist based on what we've discussed. Sure. First, absolutely map and inventory all your AI systems. Get that census done. Know what you have, where it is, and who owns it. Okay. Step one, visibility. Second, Classify those use cases by risk. Figure out which ones are high-impact regulatory, customer-facing, critical operations, and prioritize accordingly. Makes sense. Third, and this is crucial, start the process to upskill your internal audit team. They need foundational knowledge in AI, model risk, data science basics. Invest in training. Got it. Upskilling is key. And fourth, stay current on the evolving regulations and standards. Actively integrate frameworks like the NIST AI RMS and ISO IEC 42001 into your internal control libraries and audit programs. That's a solid, actionable list, but I want to leave our listeners with one final, maybe provocative thought. 
it really gets at the resilience needed here. Mm -hmm. We've talked about model drift, adversarial attacks. These aren't just theoretical anymore. No, they are very real risks that sophisticated systems face. The complexity demands much deeper testing than we've ever needed for older tech. Exactly. So for you listening, really consider this. Yeah. How prepared is your organization truly for a simulated systemic model failure? Mm. Not just a small bug, but a realistic crisis scenario. Maybe significant model drift cripples a key predictive model. Or a successful data poisoning attack forces you to set down a critical AI-driven process immediately. That kind of scenario testing. That's where this is heading. The future of AI assurance, I think, involves that kind of rigorous scenario-based simulation testing. That's how you truly gauge the resilience of your AI governance and your controls. That feels like the next frontier. That's a powerful point to reflect on as you build out your AI governance. A necessary step, I'd agree.